Hey, I'm Michelle from Farm Life Outfitters, and we are doing a collaboration with Homesteaders of America this week, and we're doing a garden tour. So I will link in the description all the other videos you should check out um, of other farms that are doing garden tours this week. So I'm going to turn it over to Adam, who is the actual gardener around here. Are you going to talk about the garden too? No, I said I was turning over to the real gardener. <laughs> oh, well, here's our lamb's quarter. <laughs> yeah. I was going to pull it up, but I think I'll just leave it for salads. So we have some beets that were transplanted from the greenhouse right here. This is kind of like extra space, so stuff for the kitchen or whatever. So we planted some pak choy that's already blooming lettuces, beets, and broccoli. So here we're going to try our hand at a mammoth pumpkin. So we're, we're shooting for like a thousand pound pumpkin right there. Then we have a row of turnips and a row of salad. And that is squash. Those little plants over there are squash plants. So we have like yellow squash, um, what are they called, scallop squash, patty pan. Patty pan, yeah. We have butternut and zucchini. So here we've got some leeks on this end, some shallots, and then those are all onions that we started from seed in our greenhouse. In the back is garlic, and over on the end is Egyptian walking onions. And then in the back under the cardboard we have cantaloupes and watermelons. So we planted, uh, our cantaloupes are honey rocks. Isn't that the kind, buddy? Honey rocks? And then the watermelons are Charleston grays all from seed that we saved in the past. And then our potatoes are some leftover, leftover potatoes from last year. And we just planted all that we had left. That was a nice surprise. I didn't, I didn't realize we had any. <laughs> so I'll just start by talking about um, what we do, like how we grow things and um, the process so this this all starts in the fall um, so last fall I would say probably like October ish we had all of our chickens right here they were in this whole area and um, all winter long I would pile up leaves out there so I would, I would collect leaves from town or you know I would use our lawn sweeper and sweep our own yard and all of our neighbors yards and bring them up here and dump them out in the spot and let the chickens uh, scratch through it and clean it up and turn it into compost. And then early this year, probably late January, um, I took some string and made some rows and piled up that compo compost into uh, rows, kind of healed it up into beds. And then we planted tomatoes here. So this is going to be our, our main focus for this year is our tomato crop all compost grown, all uh, organic, natural fertilized, no chemical fertilized. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Yep. What else, buddy? What you got right here? <coughs> you remember what these are? Peppers? Those are surprise peppers. So all this stuff, everything out here, except for like the lettuce and turnips and things, but the tomatoes, the peppers, the onions, uh, the cantaloupes, the watermelons, the broccoli, everything was started from seed in our greenhouse, which is pretty cool. I've heard several people say, why are they so tall? Why are these steaks oh. so tall? <laughs> these are, uh, the variety of tomato is big beef and it's an indeterminate, which means that the vine keeps growing for the whole length of the season. And so 
these stakes are so tall because that's what I had <laughs> and I didn't I didn't cut them to any specific length and then uh, next year if I use them again I'll just cut the bottom off and use it again so they'll get a little shorter every year I just I expect the, the tomato to get up to about this high probably probably about as tall as it'll get but if we can keep it Keep them well nourished and, and watered. And hopefully they'll stay alive all summer. You know, usually by August the vines are dying. But hopefully, hopefully you can keep them going. And the bugs are in the leaves. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're gonna handle uh, pest problems. I usually try to um, prevent as much stuff as possible so with produce I, I don't know it's hard pests pest are a problem but I'm hoping if I keep them well nourished and well watered we can prevent a lot of pest problems but there are natural um, natural things that can be done certain products that are, are, are more natural and organic than others if we have to use anything We'll do a lot of manual picking. You remember those green hornworms that yes. get on tomatoes? So last year we figured out we can use a black light at night and find them easily. So that's how I will, I will handle the hornworm, green hornworm problem is manual picking and feed them to the chickens. Sissy's flowers. Flowers, green beans. Yep, so these are uh, bush green beans. They're two weeks apart. So this row was planted probably four weeks ago. And then this, these two rows were planted two weeks after that. And then here we have flowers. Uh, I think there's marigolds and zinnias and then two rows of okra. That hasn't sprouted yet. And then up there we have some sweet corn. We have about eight rows of sweet corn up there. Silver Queen. So we um, we have started not using the tractor. <coughs> um, typically we would take the tractor and plow this, cultivate it with a disc, smooth it all out, and then plant and then use the tractor to keep the weeds out but for the last uh, probably four years um, I just take these tarps which are used billboard signs and put them down and which kills all the weeds well it makes the weeds sprout and then they don't have any sunlight so they die under the tarp and then once you plant I do use uh, my wheel hoe and, and keep it cultivated keep to keep the weeds out but we found a huge improvement in our soil by not plowing and using these tarps to to keep it covered but you have to think ahead like those tarps over there on this side of the corn that area is for pumpkins this summer so we don't we don't plant those until july so that's months away and i've already got it covered preparing it and that tarp up there will probably be like squash or something looks good yeah Everything's growing so good. I know. The beans look good, don't they? Yeah. Look at the, look at the difference in this end and that end yeah. of the beans. Right. There's something about the soil.
So these, um, in between all the branches, these little sprouts, they're called suckers. So we're keeping all those picked off, which will encourage uh, larger fruit. So if you, if you let those suckers go, that's like another plant, basically, like a, a main vine. If you let it come out here and, and keep growing, it, it will have uh, blossoms on it. But if you keep it pruned back, these blossoms here will get, they'll produce larger fruits. So usually about every two weeks, I'll spend a couple of hours out here. Well, probably more like four hours. <laughs> Pulling the suckers off and tying them up. Did you say how many tomato plants you had? I don't think so. <laughs> no, you didn't. Anybody <laughs> want to guess? Leave it in the comments about how many you think we have. How many, here. yeah. Leave in the comments how many you think we have. It's a bunch. More than I've ever planted in my life, probably. I don't know, we had about 100 last year, probably. 100? Maybe. How many did we have last year? Yeah, it's a bunch. Not like this, though. Hey. You want to tell them in the next video? Yeah. Next yeah. month. Next month, we'll tell you how many plants we have. See if you can get closest. Hopefully, all all the frost will be gone by then. A hundred. Because we might not have any for frost. Anymore. Kids, what's y'all's favorite thing that we're growing? Watermelon. Watermelon and cantaloupe. Watermelon and cantaloupe. Oh. And um, um, tomatoes and apples and peaches. Oh, you got a bunch of favorites. <laughs> Corn and flowers. Corn and flowers, okay. So that's the only reason that other stuff is planted. For their request. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about the only reason, but you know. Okay. You already need to tie them again. Well, some of these, <coughs> some of these were too small when I tied the rest of them. Oh. Now they're falling over. Then come look at your flowers. Okay. So, which flowers are these? So, um, yeah. so this first row is marigolds, and then this one is zinnias, and um, these right here are white zinnias, 
and this one is another row of marigolds and we still have a lot more marigolds left and just one pack. <laughs> it was full to the top when we got it. <laughs> These are the asters or ospreys. Powder puffs. Yeah. Cool. When are you gonna plant those? Um I don't know. I gotta figure out where to plant them first. Yeah, kind of what? I choose love onions. Yeah. Mm -hmm.